away with a through edge. Against Dalwood. Hodson to Carter. New Zealand by two. Well, yeah, after last year's one-point loss, um, we don't have three of the, the players from last year, so we're looking forward to coming over to um, play the Australians, and we've got a couple of new caps, and the challenge is going to be a big challenge, and like I said, we're looking forward to coming over to play the Aussies. Dalwood, now that's Chanky. hero material, Time 10 Cooper. seconds, timekeeper's up, yes! Wilson, that's it! Well, we've been working really hard since the World Championships and that great one goal victory. There's only been one change to the Australian side and that's Nikki Cusack into the top ten. And she's worked really hard to get there and it's a full credit to her. But at the same time New Zealand have also had many changes in their side and I think that we're really a bit unknown about what they're going to come up with this year. Um, they're a very strong side and I think more than ever they'll be really determined to get that number one ranking back. Um, I feel really strong. The Australian team's really good, looking great and uh, I'm sure we can do it again. Yes, many people on both sides of the Tasman have been looking forward to this first rematch since last year's World Championship final. Certainly the Melbourne netball fans are turning out in numbers to watch Australia and New Zealand go round again. Good evening and welcome to the Glass House. I'm Steve Rebellion for ABC Sport and in just a few moments we'll be underway with the first of a three test series between Australia and New Zealand. But the New Zealand lineup will be vastly changed to, that, uh, to the one which took the court last year in the World Final. Anne Sargent, former Australian captain, have they got the team to run with Australia tonight? Steve, it might be my green, old, green eye and my gold eye, but I don't think so. They're with a new captain and a very new combination. Four people missing from last year's lineup uh, when they came within one goal of beating Australia. Their captain, their vice captain, and two shooters. That's a lot of shoes to fill, and I think it's uh, premature to expect them to match pace with Australia uh, as yet. So I think uh, a win to the Aussies tonight. OK, let's look at the New Zealand team first of all. And Coach Lynn Parker has opted for a starting lineup that looks this way. Karen Topping, a goal shooter, partnered by April Uramia. Skipper Anna Nuvau is wing attack and 22-year-old Margaret Bray takes over the role of centre, so ably filled by Sandra Edge for so many years. Louisa Wall is wing defence, while Robin Dillimore and Tanya Cox, 189 and 188 centimetres respectively, are in the defensive circle. Australia's starting seven sees Vicky Wilson and Katrina Wagg sharing the shooting duties. Sue Kenny has one back her place at wing attack. Carissa Dalwood at centre. Victorian state captain Simone McInnes is wing defence. Skipper, of course, is Michelle Filkey, and goalkeeper is Rosalie Jenke. So except for Sue Kenny, in for Shelley O'Donnell, that's the side which finished the World Championship final. Well, our eyes and ears courtside tonight will be former Australian player and current top international umpire, Chris Burton. Chris, the Australians carry the burden of favouritism into this game. Well, I think so, and I think this crowd and all the viewers on the television are going to wait and see whether, in fact, they re can reproduce the standard which won them the world title by that one goal. Sue Kenny in, do you think Shelley O'Donnell a little unlucky? Yes, I do. I mean, I think perhaps that that's a statement of Australia's strength. How strong are the starting seven if Shelley O'Donnell is, in fact, on the bench? OK, well, we look forward to your comments during the night, Chris. And there's an international pool of umpires for this series. And tonight, Helen Lawrence from Papua New Guinea and Sheila Redpath from England will be controlling the game. And it is a sellout at the Glass House. 6,000 people here. Every ticket sold. And standing by now for the anthems.
traditional exchange of small gifts, and What is it they give each other? <laughs> I'm not telling you. Sometimes a badge, sometimes a, a coaster, just a small memento that displays uh, something nationalistic about your country. And the Australians need no reminding that they're the current world champions. As Joan Kerner conducts the toss. And it's a tough job for Ananuva coming in after Waitamanu and as New Zealand skipper. Yes, I can't envy her position trying to rebuild a New Zealand side. Obviously, they'd be looking down the track to the next World Championship, but tonight a very big headache for New Zealand to fill the shoes of four significant players from last year. Australia having won the toss. Yes, Ellen Milvau realising that, that why Tamano had such a presence and, and a, a different type of character. Difficult too because uh, should they falter tonight, it wouldn't necessarily be a reflection of her captaincy either. New Zealand have lost a key defender, a key midcourt and key shooters. Um, so it's not even just one area that's affected. Significant changes in all three thirds of the court. Australia and New Zealand have met 39 times. Australia has won on 20 occasions. New Zealand 17 and there have been two draws. And the Australia's running out onto court first. I think an expression that they're keen to get on with things. So Carissa Dalwood certainly ready. Australia with the first centre pass. No. No need to tell you the colours. Australia to get us underway. Sheila Redpath blows time on. And Dalwood to Kenny. Kenny having fought back from a bad ankle injury straight to Wilson. And Wilson will get the second attempt. And Sheila Redpath asserting herself in this game, very deliberate and very clear in obstruction ruling, so clearing the New Zealanders off the shot. As we mentioned at the start, the New Zealand defenders have plenty of height. So that's going to be the problem for Wilson and Wag. They got around it in last year's World Final. So Wag to Wilson. Obstruction, castle shot. Got two goals in the opening minute from Vicky Wilson. Kenny. Wag. This match means a lot to Sue Kenny having missed last year's final end. Yes, it's absolutely crushing for the Australian vice captain to work so hard in preparation for a world championship and then to see herself sidelined through injury in a final. And such a valuable player. And I think as Chris pointed out earlier, uh, a wealth of talent in the midcourt for Australia in this team. Uh, Ewan Mir was just fumbling on her own goal line. The Australians come away again. Chance to go 3-0 up. Wag making the lead. Well out from the circle. And although Wilson ended up on the deck, the call went against her. So Cox to Lewis Wall. And Bray. The New Zealanders have big wraps on Bray. Well, she's replacing a very athletic centre in Sandra Edge and arguably the world's best. And Bray herself a great athlete. Now that Margaret Bray's supporters back home certainly felt she was unlucky to miss the squad last year for the Worlds. Well, the hands of the New Zealand shooters letting them down in the opening stages of the match. I guess you can put it down to nerves, but they'll need to be surer if they're uh, to stay in touch with the Aussies. Hand on it from Billy Moore, and away come the Kiwis, but they spill it straight away. McInnes cleans it up for Australia. Back to Jenke. Wag and Kenny. Wilson, Cox wearing her. Yeah, It'll be interesting to see how effective Dillamore is up front as goal defence. Last year she was sensational back as keeper behind White Amanu, the New Zealand skipper. But uh, up front, spaces may open up for, for Katrina Wagg. Dillamore, oh, loose pass. She gave Bray no chance at all. The three minutes gone, low scoring game so far, 2-1 to Australia.
some early nerves, particularly from the Kiwis. Wag. Goldie Fett, the shot, half the shot, okay. Goalkeeper. Instruction by the goalkeeper. Well, Sheila Redpath not happy with the distance being kept by the New Zealand defenders. It's giving Australia a number of uh, second chances. And in fact, she was still trying to set the correct oh, offender, offending player out of play, which was caught uh, when Wag uh, cheekily took the shot. So you could well have expected that to have been recall. Good scrambling by Wilson as one possession back to Australia. And their third. And a two-on-one situation in the circle, a delight for the Australian shooters with Dillamore out of play. They make the most of it, but uh, Wilson not going to the post, which is what you'd want in that situation. Tanya Cox, half of the wall of death. <laughs> <laughs> it's a delightful expression, isn't it, when Cox and Tamanu line up in their club side, known as the wall of death. I don't know that Dillamore and Cox are, are too friendly either when they get together. Topping. Australia by one. Move out. Dow with a hand on it. Oh, how did it end up with Key? New Zealand has watched it go past. Brilliant hands from Sue Kenny. She really is a little general on court in attack for Australia. We've said it many times, but she really sets up the play for the shooters. Four and a half minutes gone. Australia by two. And Wag so free at the front of play because New Zealand uh, characteristically playing two back in the circle. Won't stop the hands of Wilson. Five to Australia. Kenny fakes it, holds up the ball, delays the release onto Dalwood. She has a good look and quick hands from Wilson to Wag. Australians in possession again. Kenny. Wilson gets the shot away quickly after that little fake and does. So a fine early lead for the Australians. It's pretty hard when you enter the match such hot favourites. Ten goals is the margin being talked about. The Australians are expected to win. We're looking though at a lineup that uh, had a great year last year and is really thriving on the success and very determined to maintain that status. I think they're comfortable with the new hero status they've assumed and putting it out there tonight. Top in. Unmarked. Dalwood sent a pass to Kenny. Kenny finding a way very well to the circle. She's able to get around uh, Louisa Wall and Margaret Bray, whoever's picking her up, and really cut space to that circle. It's with Louisa Wall, transverse line. Bray fumbles but regathers. I have to say it again, hands really letting down the New Zealand attack. And Michelle Furphy colliding with the post. Lynn Parker looking on. With Mari Erickson, the manager. Oh, it fell for topping again. And Australian coach Joyce Brown, Keely Devery. Keely, who started in the world final last year, came off at half time, so he's had a bit of a wretched run since then. Had the flu, kept her out of a couple of the warm up games. Gray, Wall, intercepted by Jenke. Deja vu. Yes. <laughs> Reminiscent of that important intercept she took in the dying moments of last year's world final. That, uh, <laughs> I think uh, the most written about intercept in netball history. Wag. Nine for Australia. And another turnover. Well, it's a blistering start from the Australian girls. The pace is phenomenal. Australia 10-4. And Chris Burton down on the sideline. I guess uh, Joyce Brown would be pretty happy with the way they're going. I think so. From this level, it looks very much as though New Zealand are falling down in attack through the centre third. Um, and yet the defenders are really working overtime. But it's the magic hands of the Australian forward line that's making the work so difficult. 
Lawrence with Nuevau. Rumia. It's a New South Wales connection from Dalwood forward to Kenny and Wag that seems to be making a difference early in the game. I think too you can't expect a side to have so many changes uh, such as New Zealand and come out and spark straight off. It needs to develop through the match and uh, certainly they wouldn't have been under this pressure. They've played Trinidad and Tobago earlier in the year and won well but uh, a little different to playing an Aussie lineup that's in good form. An error from the Australians. So Nouveau restarts into the corner for Bray. Close to a hell ball and Filky with the height on Iremia and certainly the leap. Wilson puts a little move on Tanya Cox. 11-5. And time called for a moment as something came onto the court. Tanya Cox and Vicky Wilson playing fox with each other, trying to uh, switch each other's timing. Wilson trying to shift Cox's jump and Cox trying to delay the shot, but it's not working and I'm holding off Wilson. And five minutes 40 left in the first quarter and a lead of seven by Australia. And again we see New Zealand forcing the issue when uh, the play isn't on. Previously from Bray, this time from Topping. They really need to slow it down, back play it if it's not there and play a more patient percentage netball. Dillamore came out, read it well, and came up with it. Lewis Wall. Nouveau. Oh, that was a dangerous pass that came off. Topping. One take to send a pass or shot. They do like to float their passes, Anne. Long ball from Nouveau. How Bray pulls in, I don't know, but she does a great job and the bounce onto Topping. Australia has scored at the other end, 13-6. Under five minutes left, first quarter. Nouveau bounces in for Topping. And it trickles in. Wilkie, Wilson. Contact with attack, Timothy, New Zealand. And that call against Sue Kenny. Wilson working hard to, to delay the pass, but uh, she too out of play for obstruction. And again, the New Zealand attack struggling in its timing and just misreading each other's moves. There's hesitancy stamped all over them. Well, knew about collided with one of our courtside cameras, but camera and player seem to be okay. Filky, Wilson. Kenny. And Wag. It's well, two goals for one for Australia. And that's five straight for Katrina Wag, so servicing her country very well in the first quarter. A hand on it from McInnes, and Dalwood there to clean up. Kenny. Wilson. Dalwood. Wag. Too quick along the baseline for Cox and Dillimore. It's the New Zealand defence over committed on the same side of the court and caught blind to the switch of play. Well, the crowd thought that was going to be another shot for the Australians, but it was given to Cox. And the crowd let it still red path know about it. Yes, the English seeing little joy in the last couple of days, too. Well, I'm sure. And Scotland. Obstruction goal defender, pass or shot. Great Britain league side losing last night. Scotland losing rugby union this afternoon and the Australian netball team looking to make it a uh, all Australia weekend. 14-8, two minutes 40 left, first quarter, Wilson. Wilson and Wag doing the job out there. Iremia. Wall. Topping, long way from goal. Yeah, a little unlucky, but Iremia there. Quickest to it, shortest in the goal circle. And she's seen very few opportunities. Uh, only her fourth touch at goal. She's put up three from four, but it's all been topping. Wilson.
Australia by seven, topping. Novao. Spanish offside. Novao holding good space on the edge of the circle, commanding a good feeding position, but Filky too quick. And Filky hustled the intercept there. McInnes, Dalwood. Kenny. It's got to come back. Wilson top of the circle to Kenny. And again, the Kenny eyes look one way and she passes the other. And Katrina Wagg makes it 17-9. Well, I think the message they're trying to get across, Steve, is yes, we are world champions. It's not too subtle, though. <laughs> Got a hand across the shot. Eighteen nine. So, still this two to one ratio. The Australians keeping up. Breaking goal attack. Free pass. Australia. So a break from the Kiwis. Goes it straight to the Australians. And uh, granted, New Zealand with ample height in the circle, but it's the mobility that's being found lacking. The Australians very fit, very fast, and really working the ball. So that goal not counted. It's been a hell ball. You hear the call from the umpires from the crowd noise, but that one certainly does count. 18-10. Australia with the ball. Only seconds left in this first quarter. The clock stops at a minute out from the break. And we'll just wait for the timekeeper to get up to give us the clue that New Zealand. the quarter is nearly over. And she's up now, making her way down towards Sheila Redpath. So, I don't think we're going to see any more scoring in this quarter, and we won't. And a most impressive start by the Australians. The untried New Zealand combination found a little wanting in the first 15 minutes. And a great quarter from Australia to lead at quarter time by 18 to 10. New Zealand is uh, certainly struggling, Anne and the Australian combination, just with that much more experience, slightly older. They've uh, they just seem to have the uh, seem to have the goods on the Kiwis in its early stage. Yes, well, the Australians looking very fit, looking very comfortable with the combination. I think uh, uh, relishing in having Susie Kenny on court, uh, and certainly um, they're really building, if anything, on last year's performance. New Zealand is struggling in that attack in to find its timing. It's just not happening there for them, although the defenders commendable. Uh, the crowd enjoying this first quarter. I'm sure there's some uh, fairly heated words happening in that uh, New Zealand camp. Chris Burton has been uh, down closer to the Australians. Chris, how did you see that first quarter? I think Australia won on at least three counts. Speed, space and accuracy. New Zealand appear to be struggling to get the ball through that centre third and uh, although there's a lot of tight work going on by their defenders, the Australian attack line really is finding the spaces so easily at the moment. Thanks, Chris. I think that uh, just about sums it up. I think in all thirds, really, Anne, the Australians uh, are asserting some dominance. Yes, and it's, it's almost difficult to see what Limpag Lim can drag out in, in the three-minute break in terms of reassuring her lineup and uh, giving them a clue. Uh, basically, they've got no idea where each other are going at the moment. Mm. Uh, well, if Lynn Parker's looking at changes, just looking at her uh, subs bench, she's got Joan Hodson, Leonie Lever and Bernice Menny there. I think Hodson and Lever have certainly got the experience to run with this uh, type of company. Well, oh, in Hod fact, I was surprised Lever wasn't on there. Hodson, Lever and Nova can form a combination that's had uh, exposure throughout last year's World Championships, so there is a base there. I'd expect she's telling them not to panic, to slow it down and not to force the ball because there's many a times we've seen a panic release when it really just needs to be held and the eyes kept up and another move off it instead of one bad move uh, let go astray. So I think she'd be uh, trying to pump them up, not hammer them at the moment. Well, the Australian... In the crowd, Australians in the crowd here, a lot of Kiwis here too. I don't know whether they're here, over here on holidays, but they are the best sports travellers in the world. I, I remember at the Glasgow World Championships in 87, they had the biggest supporters, supporters group and they'd come the furthest. I think they go home from one championship, uh, work their hearts out, save up for the next. 
I know I've never participated in one where there hasn't been a 50-50 uh, split with Kiwis there. Well, they can't match the 5,000 that they had at the, uh, the World Final last year at the Sydney Entertainment Centre, but there's plenty of them here. And Lynn Parker still laying down the law. And a lot of talk between the players, trying to get together with uh, players in their own area to sort out a few uh, inner problems. But the turmoil, pretty uh, fervent for the Kiwis. <laughs> That's all Aussie power. And first quarter stats, Anne? Well, I think, look at the possession opportunities for a start. Australia really dominant in the amount of ball they've had. And uh, the accuracy is slightly dominant. Uh, deceptively, it, it, it's on a par more so than we would have thought. But really, it's Vicky Wilson with 11 shots that's doing all the damage. Uh, Katrina Wagg with a 7 from 8 is impressive. But New Zealand just lacking a chance to put the shot up. Yes, 25 attempts for Australia to 14 from New Zealand. So that tells you about the possession. And the Australians forcing some turnovers with brilliant defence led by Filky at the back, of course, the skipper. So second quarter underway. Australia sitting on an eight-goal lead. And that was closer to the sort of feed we expect from New Zealand. Dillamore had a good look, held up the ball and then tried to float it to the back space. And uh, we haven't seen that patience yet from them. Bounced in for Wilson from Dalwood. Instruction goal defence. And Australia gets the first of the second quarter. Move out. Rumia. Goalkeeper, partial shot. Back to Dillimore, but it'll come back to the circle because there's a call against Rosalie Jenke. Jenke working really hard to get her legs working around, topping and block off the spaces, but the bump coming in the process. Kenny to Wag. Dalwood in for Wilson, two on her. Oh, and she got the cross away to Wag. Well, that never looked on. Watching Katrina Wagg through the Super League series this year, and I really think that she's she's come on a treat even since last year. Yeah, she she looks to have a new confidence again, feeling comfortable now in a starting lineup, and certainly the combination between her and Wilson developing with each match. And what an asset in defence she is through the mid court. She's quite awesome. Well, there's the spread of ten, and we're only two minutes into the second quarter, so the warning bells are out for New Zealand. And we've concentrated on the shooting stats, Steve, but when we have a quick look at um, intercepts, Australia pulling in 13 intercepts in the first quarter as opposed to New Zealand's four. So I think the work rate in defence for all the Australians on court telling a story. Great, a Yurumia, long ball, meant for topping, and it's going to be a toss-up. Rosalie Jenke with excellent front position then, eyes on the ball, went up nice and strong into the air, forced the toss. And topping goals, 22-12. Dalwood sent a pass to Kenny. Kenny available on virtually every centre. New Zealand dropping back from the centre to try and cover the top of the circle and put their two circle defenders back in the circle very early. So Kenny with a lot of room to move. This of all the players on court, Kenny seems to have worked out the most space for herself. Always available, as you say. Wall for Iremia. Well, it was a risky pass that came off, or did it? Contact the attack, penalty Australia. Contact, penalty Australia. Jenky. Vantage contact, Jenky. goal attack. You heard the call from Sheila Redpath, the umpires wearing microphones. Kenny. Oh, Wilson snuck around the back there. Great drive along the baseline. Cox didn't know where she was. Penny did really well then to hold up that release. She'd already stepped on. She had to hold uh, the landed foot in the air and balance with pressure on her from Bray. Did very well to find Wilson. Great move for Australia. So Cox to Wall to Nuova. It's Bray. Made a hesitant start. And I was about to say it was settling down, but that's not a settled pass. Play! Jenky. Four minutes into the second quarter and no misses for this quarter from any shooter on court. In fact, the Australians with six straight between them. Jenky. 
Questionable call for some. I'm not sure that it was off his New Zealand hands last before it went out a moment ago. Dalwood. Kenny. She's certainly confident on that ankle. She's moving so well. Well, it's probably the first big test on uh, that stress fracture that we've seen her go through and coming through with flying colours. So 25-12. Australia building on this lead. They've been unrelenting through the first quarter and a third. Katrina Wag tenacious in defence, but she will draw a contact penalty and be out of play for that last attempt. Topping. But Really, no Australian player conceding any room in defence. A very tight one-on-one -on -one defence, a very disciplined defence from Australia. McInnes. Got a contact call against her. Golfers! Or is it against Kenny? Bray to Yurmia. Silky with a rebound. McInnes for someone to be available and it's Wilson who's made the long lead away from the circle Wags back there oh is that right idea Wilson just tad slow to catch onto it Dylan Moore that's for Bray Ramia contact goal keeper shot where you are topping 25-13. Seven minutes gone, second quarter. There really isn't an Australian player who's being outplayed and by her opponent. Australia? No, I'd have to agree with you. Australia far too dominant in all areas and thriving on the world championship title on that status, just uh, reveling in it, as is the crowd delighting in the skills they're providing in this match. It's been quite a while since we've seen a New Zealand line struggle, as is this one. Twenty-six thirteen, so that two to one ratio still there. Bray in for topping. Who is that for? Only Dalwood. Here come the Australians on the charge. Wilson, Kenny. Oh, it's good to watch. Wag gave it. Well, straight to Dillamore. Well, she learned a lesson for trying one too many, and, and uh, the, they'll make a pay for it. Second chance coming through Wilson, though. Bay! Out to Kenny. That was a special passage. She deserved the conversion automatically. It comes belatedly, though, for, for Wilson. Down with to Kenny. Threaded it through two defenders. They're going for the fast break again. Oh, Wilson from a mile out. Cox with the rebound. Well, I'd hate to see the soles of the sand shoes at the end of this match. They might be running on socks, I think. <laughs> Pretty fast speed out there. The floor here at the glass house, not sprung. In fact, it still sits on top of the swimming pool that was used in the 56 Olympics. I think the pool's empty. <laughs> I hope so. I think the way the Australians are playing, they could probably walk across it, Steve. Filky, McInnes, Dalwood. Merciless is probably the best word to describe for this performance. Kenny knowing she had to take that pass just inside the centre third or over third would have been called. She does it and slips it onto Wilson. And the lead is 15. Well, at half time, I'll go uh, scouring through the records, I think, to, to find the biggest margin, because I think we're heading for one. Well, my prediction's already been surpassed. <laughs> <laughs> McInnes, Dalwood, and Kenny. The thing you won't see, though, is the Australians let up. They're very disciplined, and it would be um, a mark of respect to New Zealand that they keep on with the mission. Contact shooter coming past New Zealand on court. So we won't see them lessen the pace or the effort. Shelley O'Donnell, Keely Devery there. And uh, would not be a surprise to see other players introduced to this game. The lead is considerable, and I'm sure Joyce Brown, with confidence in all ten, uh, may well share uh, the special feeling of this match with the bench. Wag to Wilson. And a lot of school kids in here to enjoy this. Wilson. Of course, netball, Australia's number one 
female participant sport by a long stretch. <laughs> what have we got, 800,000 players here? Yes, and it feels like they're all here. I know there's a few in the Lower Clarence Netball Association glued to a television and uh, no doubt enjoying this. It's virtually a lesson in how to play it, isn't it? And a few non-plus Kiwis. Wilson. And what can the Kiwis do? Mari Erickson, the manager there, and Lynn Parker, looking none too thrilled. I don't think they expected to win, but nor did they expect to be on the end of this kind of treatment. No, I think, uh, in fairness to them, it's too early to expect them to mount a challenge. They've got a rebuilding process underway, but this is certainly uh, a big gap to fill. 32-13, five minutes left second quarter. It's with topping. Feels like a while since they've been down here. Well, that's the first on the board for this quarter for April Iremia. Wilson, long shot. On tackle, the fans pass the shot, Australia. That's a gimme shot, and she takes it. 33-14. Yeah. <laughs> Breaking free pass, New Zealand. Now the break comes from Simone McInnes, anxious to get out and defend. The Australians could well be leading by 20 at half time. There's one back from Eremia. Well, Chris Burton, not a lot happening for the Kiwis. You've got any suggestions? <laughs> no, but it's interesting down at courtside. When the Australians take the ball, they seem to pick out a single player and let that pass go. The New Zealanders' eyes are travelling all over the court looking for an option. Yes, the Australian defence has got them a little rattled. Downward, easy. Oh, and Romare clumsy on the challenge on McInnes. And the swiveling eyes, Steve, just tests to me the fact that these Kiwi girls don't know each other as a combination. Kenny, back to Wag. And have a look at the speed that Cox's arm went through. She really came after that pass. It shot beyond her. I mean, just too fast for the Australians. 34-15, three minutes left till half time. Joyce Brown should be happy. <laughs> she still won't release a smile. A lot of work to do, she'll be telling them. Another half and three minutes to play, and uh, nobody coasting out on court for Australia. McInnes, oh, well, using the width of the court, the Australians very well. Wag was there was space for Wag at the back of that uh, circle. They find her belatedly, but it comes through Wilson. Her 14th for the quarter. Australia lead by 20, and we're not yet at half time. No, Lynn Parker may take the same view as uh, Joyce Brown at halftime, but the changes may as well be made. Well, I think she has nothing to lose unless she is confident that this lineup has potential and that by running them in she'll salvage something by giving them time together. Personally, I don't think it's working for them, and I'd be experimenting. It's early in the series, and we all know the spirit a New Zealander plays with, so a uh, long time for them to make up this deficit. Bray working the top of the circle, finds topping. Bit of a morale booster there with Cox having taken the intercept at the far end. Well the two New Zealand shooters have proven they're accurate when they have the ball and a lovely feed then from Bray to topping, a nice little dodge just in front of the post but they just haven't had the opportunities they would wish for. Quick hands from Michelle Thicke, Thicke the Aussie skipper. And a few times we've seen New Zealand uh, unable to do anything but watch the speed of the Australian Outside move and hands. In the it's with Wilson. And Dalwood looks a little one too. And the lead is still 20. Kenny. Wilson. Well, Wag and Wilson giving away height to Cox and Dillamore, but such is the speed of their moves and the accuracy of the feeding and the 
it's, uh, it's pretty much one-way stuff. Well, I had a big question mark that when you put such tall players together without, say, a Tamanu that is uh, more mobile and more the general, that perhaps you lack the ability to match a running style of player such as the Australians. And I think we're seeing that there's the height, but they just can't get out there one-on-one. -on -one. A good intercept won by Nuovao and finished off. 37-17. One of, can't give it in. one of the few errors we've seen, it's virtually been uh, almost error-free netball from the Australians. Their minds are on the job, very motivated for this game. Throw in Australia. Play! McInnes. To Kenny. Wag. Keep a shot. Back here. Raises the question too, Steve, of differences in international umpiring. A much more open game than the, the final. And Australia revelling in it. And that is half time. And Australia outscoring New Zealand in that second quarter by 20 goals to seven. So a most impressive display from the Australians. 38 17 at half time. We'll take a news break and be back here very shortly. Percentage is okay, but that uh, doesn't show the wealth of possession, does it? I oh, will just make mention of it. Okay. And well, will I see a breaker before it comes back to us? Okay. Because I've only got out of the van here, not off air. side after the score which exists at half time is confidence they're not leading towards each other with any degree of security yes I think you've uh, hit it on the head there Chris there's not too much confidence amongst that squad and although the shooting percentages don't really tell you the overwhelming possession that the Australians have had the shooting percentages aren't uh, that much different but the Australians have had so much more ball and 33 penalties, 4 to 30 uh, for the Kiwis, not much in that either, but the intercepts, the really telling statistics there, with 20 for the Australians, their defence just in overdrive, forcing the mistakes and from the Kiwis. Yes, uh, I'm sure New Zealand uh, very much lacking confidence, and it's hard to create that through the middle of a game. I mean, once you're down, it really starts to open up on you, and uh, you notice every mistake and you notice every umpiring decision. They really need to uh, give these new players a chance to settle in. Leone Lever coming on as goal attack uh, to replace April Iremia. 
again, uh, a bit more height. We saw her last year in the World Championships, but more back in a shooter role. A very accurate player. So contributing more height to the New Zealand goaling end. And of course, uh, the change through the mid-court in Hodson coming on. Very athletic player. Has played touch football uh, extensively at home and uh, a great athlete to watch. And also a great character. She might be the player, you know, that sparks them and lifts them motivationally and she says, is, come on, yeah. let's try and drag it back. Uh, a, a wag is, uh, is Joan Hodson, but that's the Australian uh, squad the and water. Joyce Brown <laughs> looking very happy. So is Michelle Filkey. Well, it's too early to celebrate, but they know they're doing the job. So a five-minute break. They take at half time. Three minutes at quarter and three-quarter time. And uh, interesting to see Australia not looking to any changes def in defence. The change will only come through the mid-court. Shelley O'Donnell replacing Carissa Dalwood. So Joyce Brown elected to keep a very stable lineup so they can continue on with this mission. Well, it's not that Dalwood did anything wrong in the first half. And O'Donnell and Hodson just shaking hands there mid-court. Both fresh players on court. Nouveau. And I don't say this out of any question over Carissa Dalwood's fitness because uh, it's immaculate. She's one of the fittest players we've ever seen. But uh, can you imagine how the legs would feel running this pace, <laughs> pushing the ball down in overdrive for Australia? Fresh legs, probably a great idea. O'Donnell to Wilson. Now, O'Donnell played such a great game at wing attack in the world final last Contact year. Ball, she was possibly unlucky not to be in the starting seven tonight. But here she is, at least getting half a game. And of course a great chance to show your skills off in front of a home crowd. O'Donnell, a Victorian, as is Simone McInnes and Rosie Jenkins. So giving them a chance to perform in front of uh, their own home crowd. Okay. 39-17, Australia leading. Wall, Melissa Wall, youngest player on court by a couple of years. She's just 20. McInnes pulls in the scraps. O'Donnell. And New Zealand very much in chase position in defence, uh, really not in the hunt to try and get up the front and uh, stop some of the deliveries. Out of court, it's Australia throwing. Australia's ball, you it's heard it. Sheila Redpath, so it's Wilson to bring it in. Vantage contact, vantage contact. Kenny. And you see from that release on court, contact you have on a ball. moving Lots player and one on the hole to give variety to the feeders and also to draw the interest of one of the defenders. Australians making it look easy. It's with Hodson. O'Donnell and, and Simone McInnes teeming up to close out Arna Nooval from that centre option. Oh, <laughs> Jenki, that was easy for her. It was a big stretch, but her opponent was nowhere near it. Jenki, through to O'Donnell. Good, good ball to O'Donnell. Yes, yeah. very direct. Uh, didn't waste time. Contact wing defence. Wasted strong a couple action. of defenders. <laughs> <laughs> Kenny to Wilson. I think very evident too for the Australians the amount of option. We have at least two, three movers operating on every ball. So some strong choices there for the ball uh, distributors. So the lead is 24 and uh, scurrying through the records at half time. Back in 1948, Australia's biggest margin was established. It was 31 when uh, Australia beat New Zealand 44 13. So that margin is in. Move, some over, danger. <laughs> move over record. Yeah. Stepping, goal attack, in fact, that was Australia's first New tour to New Zealand. Back in 48. I don't think New Zealand would like to be reminded that we've wound the clock back to 48 and, and to that particular match. And certainly these two countries, widely acknowledged as the best two exponents in the world. Oh, wall, good speed. Got beat Kenny to it. I think Kenny must have thought she had the contest on her own. Pulled in by Dillimore. A little bit scrappy, but New Zealand maintaining possession. Hodson to Lever. Talking to uh, her friends from Television New Zealand who are also taking this coverage. Uh, they really feel that Leone Lever has come on quite a deal since last year too. In fact, she was uh, only just missing out on a place in the, in the final seven last year. I feel she's uh, more confident. Yes, I think her slight build is deceiving because she's quite effective. It's just a different style of game. She's not a power player, but very accurate. 
The lead is 25 for Australia. Four minutes gone, third quarter. Nurvau into topping. Rolled up the right sleeve. Contact goal defence, pass a shot, New Zealand. Tilki had a little bit of a knock, but plays on. Steve, Good. we've talked about uh, wholesale changes to this New Zealand lineup, but for my money, if I had to pick one that, that has caused the most damage, it would be the removal of Sandra Edge through retirement from the midcourt for New Zealand. I have big wraps in her, and she's uh, a oh, great athlete, very much the link and the organiser in attack, and I think they're missing that tonight. Wilson. Contact goals, defence, half a shot. Well, they're... Uh, Starting their rebuilding program a long way out from Birmingham in uh, three years' time. But that a lot of these players playing for Australia tonight may be uh, past their best by that stage. They, so oh. the New, Zealand, uh, New Zealand might have got the jump on us then. I don't know that I'd be as uh, confident to say past their best. I would like to say I think it will be very difficult for these girls to retire. Yeah. They will feel on a roll. Well, the oldest of the Australians is only 27, having said that. Yeah, I guess there is a time when personal lives take over, but I think uh, these girls will find it a very difficult decision because they'll be well aware if they can maintain this lineup intact, performing as it is, that uh, we look to put another world championship uh, in the records. Lever goals. It's 44-20. Six minutes gone. Third quarter. The Australians have come through very thorough preparation in playing uh, the All-Stars, virtually the next in line to the Australian team in a lead-up series, but uh, it must be a little shattering for those All-Star players to watch this and think, well, how do you crack a place in this team? Wilson to Wag. Brought down by Tanya Cox. Strong rebound from her. Move out to Lever. Kept it in. Oh! Hodson bumped into the circle and must go against Filky and does. Filky leaves the mark prematurely. She'll be uh, brought back. And topping to finish off the move for New Zealand. Some Kiwi supporters there, Jane Hodson. Tahitian and Samoan background. Of course, very much a New Zealander. Playing for the Silver Ferns in last year's world titles. Three, <laughs> and Hudson oh, joins in the dispute. Chris Can you have a toss-up between three? <laughs> I think we'll have it between the two silver ferns and then the winner against Sue Kenny. Oh, now, has Kenny to go missed back it all together. First infringement. Yeah, Kenny missed it all together. <laughs> Topping. Silky. The Australians just too athletic, aren't they? I mean, they're strong in the air, strong on the ground. Very and quick. the timing is just so good. Wag. What a joy to be playing on the end of a Sue Kenny pass every time. As Wag found herself then. And they'll go through Filky in the midcourt and Sue Kenny, just a magic pass to link with Wag on the base. It's with Wag again. Dillamore comes down with it. Hodson. Lever. Wag with four misses for this quarter. She's put up three from seven, so she would probably be concerned to lift that shooting stat for herself. Although as part of a combination that's blitzing, she'd be very content with the performance. It's very difficult to find fault with a lineup that uh, is so convincing. Topping. For their height in their own circle, New Zealand not contesting their rebounds well. Each time they've been outclassed by Filky and Jenke. Great Good. take then by Louisa Wall. Hudson. But again, we see a breakdown in the midcourt. Very tentative to enter into the goal third. It's just there's no leads coming from the shooters. They're content to sit back in body position. Topping. Excellent goal. It's a struggle to get it down there, but well finished. 
Well, the approach is halted. Hodson has to look back several times. Now they're on the move. Hodson really creates the play and finds Topping on the base. The only lever. And Hodson, I think, has settled in pretty well to the pace of this game. She's making a little bit of a difference, and so is Lever. Well, Hodson would be one of the most experienced of the Silver Ferns, and very exuberant. So I think she can contribute a lot, both in um, her attitude and her court play. She's the one that can spark them up, I think. Australia's only outscored New Zealand 7-6 so far in this quarter. So... The rot has been stopped to some extent. Make it 8-6. Norval. Hodson. Topping. And filthy hounded lever back there. Hey! And Keely Devery and Nicole Cusack just disappearing for a bit of a warm-up. Might see them final quarter. Cusack a shooter and Devery a defender. Kenny. O'Donnell, Wilson, forty-seven, twenty-three. Lynn Parker, coach, I'm sure a little pleased with this third quarter effort. I think at the moment she'd be resigned to the outcome and uh, looking on to the preparation to the next test. I'm not sure, though, looking at this, that the Sydney Entertainment will hold, Centre will hold any more joy for them. We'll hold a few more people. In fact, <laughs> uh, tickets still available at the Sydney Entertainment Centre for the second test Touch Wednesday advantage. night. Contact advantage. If you'd like to go. Holds 10,000. Understand there's a few thousand seats still left. Hodson to leave that. Move out. Yes, Filthy takes a tumble. And Australia wins the penalty. The backspace, you know, was there for Toppy. She just didn't have the confidence to cut to that space and contest it in the air. So they're really struggling. Oh, Australia spilled it. Then it found its way off the post. Well, I think uh, Michelle Filkey copped it flush on the face, but she, in the last to let you know, she'd never been hurt. <laughs> Lever, just giving yourself some elbow room there. Forty-seven twenty-four. Topping. And New Zealand now keeping pace with Australia, but it's an awesome lead to pull back. O'Donnell to Filky. It's Donald a shame, again. actually, because this Melbourne crowd has been robbed of some of the delights you can expect from a New Zealand lineup. We usually can see it driven onto the circle and the shooters hold and that the spaces be fed, but they really aren't playing that style of game. It's to the body and it's just not working. Wag for Australia. Excellent pass and move out a fine topping. The lead at halftime was 21, it's 22 now. Contact pass for shots. We're just under two and a half minutes left until three quarter time. Wilson. New Zealand can really take heart from this quarter and I think put it down to the combination between Hodson and Noval. It's really starting to, to lift the team and the drive far superior through the midcourt to uh, the earlier quarters. Hodson. And Hodson, she almost looks like she's enjoying this. Lever gets rid of uh, Filky and goals. And just a few spaces starting to open up against Filky and Jenki. Might be growing weary, and so Devery may find herself on for the final quarter. And such was the work rate of the Australian defenders in that first half. Wouldn't be surprised if they are tired. They forced so many intercepts, but they worked hard to achieve them. 49, 28, minute 30 left, third quarter. Hodson into the corner. Did brilliantly to keep it in and find a teammate. Well, she's revelling in being given the opportunity to enter the game. 
And I think we may see a lot more of her in the series. New Zealand hit the front for the quarter. Difference is 20. Wilson. Well, that was just a marvellous shot. The run's been all New Zealand's way, and it's a, a really class shooter who can, after a break of a matter of minutes, take a shot from that distance, look at the post, and put it through. Topping. Shoots over Jenke, oh, and... The reply. Well, <laughs> long bombs at either end. 50 to 30. Contact penalty Australia. Kenny to Wilson. Contact, pass the shot. Contact and New Zealand realising that this quarter is almost gone. Timekeeper not up yet, so time enough, if they're good enough, for another one. Lever. <laughs> it's time to adjust the shirt. And does that goal count? I think it does. 51-31. Yes, the penalty had to be taken. So a much, much better quarter from New Zealand, having made those changes. And keeping pace with Australia in the third quarter, but there you still see the handsome margin of 20. Australia 51, New Zealand 31. Well, Anne, uh, New Zealand, if my maths are right, outscored Australia 14-13 in that quarter. Yes, they really came alive through that third quarter and I think put it down to the entry of Hodson in particular into the game. She even lifted Noah Val's performance and a combination starting to develop through the mid-court for New Zealand. They look a little more content with their effort in that uh, New Zealand huddle, but uh, Chris Burton is down with the Australian bench. Chris, do you think the Australians will make any changes? Well, actually, during that quarter, uh, Cusack and uh, Devery went out and spent quite a bit of time warming up. So, And uh, they're continuing to do so on court behind me, so perhaps that in indicates a change. Well, we'll watch to see if they pull on a bib. And, in fact, as we watch, Nicole Cusack is doing just that. So Katrina Wagg is going to warm the bench. Nikki Cusack, of course, uh, forcing her way back into this lineup, having missed out on being part of that winning World Championship team. So Wag off. Just can't see whether Devery has got a start as well. I think she has. Yes, Keely Devery also is going to come on. That goalkeeper, I think. And the, the crowd at the glass house trying to get the wave going I think they think they're on a winner <laughs> well they need a bit of work on their wave <laughs> we'll see if they can get it going by the end of this match which has one quarter to run Australia by 20 Keely Devery is on at goalkeeper Fulky still at goal defence so it's Jenky who is off so that uh, record margin might be safe after all Anne I don't know. I, I think uh, Australia would have been reminded to keep on with the effort in the break and uh, I don't think we'll see any mercy. When we look at the stats for the third quarter, Vicky Wilson really lifting the shooting through that quarter. 10 from 12 and 83% is very solid work at international level, particularly when you're playing the number two in the world. Katrina Wagg dropping down a bit with only three from seven. 43% is disappointing for her, but her work rate out in attack and defence is valuable. New Zealand lifting, particularly through Karen Topping. And 10 Topping from 15. got the first goal of the last quarter. And two together here if she goals now. Devery's challenge ineffectual. Shelly O'Donnell with a centre pass. Kenny. A match with 14 minutes to run. And Steve, New Zealand may well be wishing they'd started this game at half time. Yeah. <laughs> Shelly O'Donnell kept that in, I don't know how. Bounced in for Nicole Cusack. 
Great start for Cusack. That's her re-entry into the international arena for Australia. It's nice to put the first one away. She suffered a nasty injury in the game against Trinidad Tobago at uh, Easter. Her front tooth was all but knocked out. Could uh, knock your confidence around that kind of thing. And it's not true that we call her old Gappy anymore. <laughs> Wilson takes a step away from Billy Moore. Didn't work. Cox with the rebound. Wall. Hodson. Contact, we attack. Penalty Australia. And Neuvau ends up on the bench. Contact. Lap of our floor manager. I think she was trying to give a few uh, comments to Chris <laughs> <laughs> for our next cross. Cusack. With that two classic two. shooting style that is really the model for all netballers. Yeah, she comes from the Calder School of Shooting. Uh, Margie Calder having done work with her at uh, the Australian Institute of Sport and that very high release, very well protected from a defender. And uh, sometimes, uh, I swear, Cusack's shot comes down with snow on it. O'Donnell to Wilson. Couple of minutes gone, last quarter, Australia by 21. It's getting hard to <laughs> hear ourselves here as the noise level lifts in the final quarter. Hodson worked with Nuova out. Devery had that ball keeper. marked as hers, but uh, Lever and Topping hungry to get hands on it for a shot. That call went against Devery. She couldn't believe it and didn't hear it for a while. They're still the lead is 20. Wilson for Cusack. Oh, who just took her eyes off it at the last second. Thought she had it and didn't. Dillamore to Wall and Lever. So it could be a different game in Sydney, Anne, when they get this uh, combination sorted out. Yes, uh, they really are putting out the challenge that there's more to come from this New Zealand lineup. And uh, I expect we'll see it developing across the series. I think it really was the only fair thing to say that uh, in missing significant players you couldn't expect it to work straight off for them but uh, they've recovered well since half time. Lever. Oh unlucky. Had a good look that one and came out. Well Lever herself stood back a little and uh, was waiting for it to drop. Kenny to Cusack. Wilson makes the move on the base and great collection from Cusack. And again, the tall New Zealand defenders caught up high in the ball with very little recovery and agility evident in their game. Cusack just as quick a mover as Wag. She not quite as tall. Two on one in the circle. Devry uh, on the move to try and split up the two shooters so they can't set up on her. And she does well. She draws a contact against Lever. It's with McInnes, O'Donnell. Cusack free. Wilson. Defender staying back. They're both out of play, so this is money for jam. Well, a clumsy attempt then from Cox. They really are being outplayed by the moving style of netball. Cusack. And that call is against Sue Kenny. She can't believe it. Dillamore, move out. And the hands working much better for New Zealand, Steve, as the game's developed. Uh, we saw really loose hands at the start of the game when they're un under nerves and they're not confident. But uh, some of those fingers working with super glue now. Here's Topping, long way from goal. And a call against Lever. And uh, that's two in a row against her. Oh, Cox always had her eye on that. I think that's the first time we've seen her wander so far from the circle and have a go during the match. Well, if she reads the play that well, I'd like to see her out there more often. Well, I think that was there for the having, and uh, the tape was just a little clumsy. I really think she could have finished that off. Well, they're just starting to build this lead again. It's 23. Wall to Dillamore. Nine minutes left. Contact centre, penalty New Zealand. Topping. Oh. 
Jockey, Wilson. Well, not the right option to choose cross court top of the circle where there was a lot of traffic. There were two defenders in, be in between the Australians. Well, I don't think New Zealand could believe their luck. They're so used to seeing the Wilson bomb fly past their eyes. So New Zealand with a chance to put three goals together here unanswered. Devery, almost. New Zealand ball. Anna Nouveau. Joan Kerner, I'm sure enjoying this contest. Goal attack, goal attack, goal to Australia. Take a mind of finances anyway. <laughs> Cusack for Australia. Kenny to Wilson. Well, the timing just immaculate for Australia. Tanya Cox never made any effort to cover that lead from Wilson. Future netballer there. <laughs> World Championships, what year? 2000 and something. <laughs> Wilson. I've got one vying for that. And Australia steady with a couple. Make the lead 23 again. Lever to move out. Where you are, shooter. Here's Topping. Well, she followed that in so quickly, I think she must have believed it was going to miss. And she got the second one. 59-37. Seven minutes to go. Kenny. Cusack. Australians making space all around that circle. Cusack left on her own. Oh. Wilson didn't know that one was coming, but she was quick enough to pull it in. And the Australians hit 60. And I think the Kiwis are going to avoid the embarrassment of a, a new record margin. Lever. Construction goal stands. And the goal is good, as you heard, Sheila Redpath. O'Donnell, Wilson. Obstruction goal kick. Well, Cox left a challenge to right at the end, and it was still obstruction, according to Helen Lawrence. Not that it mattered. Vantage contact. 61-38. Wall. Obstruction goal attack. Can you pass Hodson. Once it's taken quickly. Contact centre, New Zealand. Hodson. Filky. Pull that one in too easily. McInnes. O'Donnell. Kenny. And Cusack. Oh, well, Dillymore had no idea where Wilson was. But Cusack knew. Wilson. Wall. Hodgson. Lever. And a nice goal from the Kiwis, possibly the best string of passes that they've uh, shown us, Anne. Well, a whistle wall offloads to start off this passage, and it just is delightful. Contact the best center, of the series, not of our, with a wonderful switch onto Lever. Contact, sorry, this is gone. Contact, penalty New Zealand. Contact, Under five minutes left. Still Australia by 23. That's it. Loose one from O'Donnell. The type of margin that we're seeing here just emphasises what a difference the, the missing players from New Zealand made last year. Waitamanu, Sandra Edge, Tracy Earl and Julie Carter. Unable to make the trip here because of retirement or work commitments. Yes, Carter and Cheryl Waite unable to come because of work commitments and... Uh, well, Tracy Earl's pregnant, I think, isn't she? Yes, she's pregnant. Sandra Edge uh, retired and Waitamanu retired. 
on tap, penalty New Zealand. Nuovau looks for somebody, has Outside to go for advantage. Hodgson. The shoot is shut down by the Outside Australian advantage. defenders, Devery and Filky. Intimidation. Barnes is gone. And even in this last quarter round, New Zealand still sticking with Australia. Yes, well, I think we still might have a great series on our hands. I mean, we've been treated to a wonderful spectacle by Australia tonight. Absolutely skillful. Uh, but also great signs from New Zealand. They're not going to lay down and die, and there could be big things afoot in Sydney. The lead was 21 at halftime. It's 20 now. It'll be 21 again now in second. So the second half has been tied. Much better effort from New Zealand. So they're sorting out their lineup. And I think it's not fair to say that it's any of the substitutions Australia have made. It's more that New Zealand's substitutions have worked for them because Australia's lost nothing in putting on their bench through the match. Wilson. Oh, and she is hurt. And that is a nasty injury uh, to the left wrist. See if we can see how she... Oh, she found herself with the right wrist under the foot of Dillimore, I think. Poor goalkeeper. And Grace Bryant, the Australian doctor, has come out on court. And I think Vicky Wilson is in some pain as the New Zealand bench, New Zealand squad a little uh, discussion. I'm sure pleased with their second half effort. Well, this could be devastating for Australia if Wilson is unable to... Well, it'll, this match might well and truly be won, but for the series... Uh, the crowd trying to cheer each other, out-cheer each other. With just two minutes 40 left on the clock, the clock having stopped for this injury. Marilyn Malewish, the Australian manager, also in attendance. Well, the crowd here has been treated to a magnificent display by Australia in the first half and a big improvement from New Zealand in the second. And although Australia, I think, is going to win this game comfortably, it certainly has set the stage for a, a great second and third test because they've shown they can match it. And I think Wilson is going to come off. And a big hand for the experienced Australian shooter who was probably the player of the final last year Australia against New Zealand and just trying to uh, work out what combination Australia can put out there now Sue Kenny can certainly shoot Rosalie Jenke may come back on and with two minutes uh, is the time that they can have for an injury like this. And I'm just working out how many substitutions they've used. Yes, I just realised that Cusack, O'Donnell and Devery, who are all on court, that is their three substitutions allowed. So Australia has to finish the game with six players. Kenny will go to goal attack. Well, it's just as well for Australia that the margin isn't closer because this could have been catastrophic for them. Six against seven is no way to play New Zealand. However, Nulbauer to Hodson. Sixty-three forty-four. Hodson. And an infringement in the centre third by the Kiwis. Two minutes to go. Australia safe, but this is a dramatic finish with Wilson unable to continue. Australia reduced to six. And Sue Kenny pops in her first. 
Well, she's played a lot of netball as a shooter. She's had a brilliant game as wing attack. I'm sure she didn't expect to be here. Cusack. And so McInnes has moved to centre. O'Donnell to wing attack. So Australia playing without a wing defence. Topping. Another contact call against Lever. Debbie to Filky. O'Donnell to Kenny. So once the Australians get it up into their attacking third, they're not short of numbers. It's the wing defence they're playing without. Instruction goal shoot. Pass or shot. Contact with the ball. Keep it both out of play. <laughs> both Kiwi defenders out of play and the crowd left them know what they think of it. Australia by 22. They've certainly lifted the Australians since that unfortunate injury to Wilson. Kenny. And in fact, the Australians have outscored the Kiwis since they've been playing with one less. Contact goalkeeper, penalty New Zealand. Topping for New Zealand inside the last minute so time perhaps for one more goal as Cusack comes out to take the pass from O'Donnell McInnes playing at centre Kenny Hodson to Lever and a contact call against McInnes to slow down the New Zealand attack though the crowd trying to count down the clock, but it doesn't work that way. Only the timekeeper knows how many seconds are left, and there aren't many. And there are none. Great win by Australia. Well, a great effort by the Australians to not be overrun in the last few minutes. The game was always safe when Wilson left the court. But what a sensational finish to have to play out a game against New Zealand with only six players. They'd used their three substitutions with Wilson having to leave the court with two minutes 40 left. But a great first up win in the series by Australia, but New Zealand certainly showing that they can match it with Australia with a, a better lineup on for the second half. In the end, the margin was 21, and that was the margin at half time, so that shows you that. New Zealand able to match it with Australia through the third and fourth quarters. The game won in the first two by Australia. And I'm sure Chris Burton is with a very happy Michelle Filkey. Uh, talking to Michelle Filkey down on centre court. Michelle, how did you feel about a 22-goal win? I think it was very pleasing that we could come out for the first match and have that great a victory. But I still think there's plenty of improvement for the second game. Right, and how does the injury of Vicky Wilson look in terms of Australia's chances? Yeah, well, it's a bit of a shame for Vicky. Uh, we don't need that this time of the game. But, you know, Susie showed that she can come on under pressure and shoot for Australia. And uh, we've got three very good goalers to back her up. But, you know, we'll see how she is tomorrow. It was a big margin, but it, was it a hard game to play? Yes, it was very physical. Uh, and uh, I thought the umpires did a good job of controlling the game today. But Australia was just too fast today. A few errors, and uh, we'll eye them out in the next couple of days. Michelle, uh, one win under your belt. All the best for the next two tests. And we'll go back to the other commentators. Thanks very much, Chris. And the crowd here at the Glass House giving the Australians as they warm down a big hand. And the Kiwis also. Here's Anne Sargent. With me is New Zealand captain Anna Nova. Anna, it's a terrible time to grab you. A disappointing result for New Zealand. No doubt you would prefer a different scenario if you first outing as captain. Um, yes, and it's. Um, I think it's really good that we've got one under our belt anyway, just citing Australia and measuring them up. Uh, we didn't have a very good first half. Um, I think we performed better in the second half. Uh, so I think we, it's back to the drawing board, I think. Tell me, how did it feel, the first half Australian just opened up at a blistering pace? It must have been a terrible feeling. I'm captaining this side. What do we do? Well, I, you know, I, I, I never underestimated the Australians. I knew that they'd come out all, you know, firing up. Um, 
I think it's more so making sure that they, the girls believe in themselves, you know. It's just getting through that wall at the moment. So, captaining this side for the first time against Australia, it's a bit of a... Uh, it's really interesting, <laughs> put it that way. <laughs> like you said, you came home brilliantly in the second half, so better things ahead for New Zealand, perhaps. Sure. Yeah, thanks, Anne. Thanks very much, Anne, and Anna Nuevao, I'm sure, taking the right attitude. Stats there, well, the Australian shooting percentage is pretty much a match for New Zealand, but we had more of the ball, and intercepts the telling margin. Second test is on Wednesday night in Sydney at 8.30 on ABC. Make sure you're watching that, and the third will be at the Powerhouse in Adelaide next Saturday. Goal attack uh, next Saturday afternoon, Adelaide versus the Institute of Sport, the first semi-final of the Super League, and the following Saturday, June the 27th, Sydney versus Melbourne, the second semi. Well, I hope you've enjoyed the first test from the Glass House in Melbourne with Australia running out winners by 67 to 46, but New Zealand certainly showing their worthy opponents. Watch out for them in 